Hello all of you, I welcome you uh, to today's lecture. We uh, discussed uh, some aspect of uh, silane based uh, reducing agents last time. We saw how um, silane gas can be uh, modified and uh, different types of uh, uh, organic uh, groups, functional groups could be attached to silicon and uh, different uh, uh, silane reagents can be prepared which are relatively more stable than the silane gas and uh, these uh, modified silane based reagents can reduce a uh, number of functional groups uh, and such as a, a carbonyl group or an ester group or, or even a halides uh, which are capable of um, forming a carbocation. So, if we have, we have a possibility of generating a carbocation, then the silane based reagents where there is uh, one or two uh, silanes, uh, the hydrogens are present can lead to the formation of the corresponding uh, reduced product. Then uh, we also saw how the rhodium uh, modified reducing agents. Uh, can be prepared and they lead to 1, 2 or 1, uh, 4 addition of hydrogen and to an enone system and we can get either uh, from an enone we can get either a 1, 2 product at a reduced product or a 1, 4 reduced product depending on the bulk of the corresponding. Um, groups attached to silicon. Then uh, towards the end uh, we saw polymethyl uh, hydrosilane uh, as uh, PMHS uh, which is something that is like a polymer and uh, therefore uh, we can expect that uh, such a polymeric uh, molecule uh, which is uh, liquid to handle and it is stable, air stable and inexpensive and how it can, can be used in uh, reducing various kinds of molecules uh, similar to the uh, silanes that we discussed. So of late uh, if you see the literature uh, many people prefer to use PMHS uh, as a reducing agent rather than triethylsilane or other reducing agents of similar type. Now we see how these reactions occur. Uh, for example, if we, if we take uh, a carbonyl group then uh, PMHS in the presence of uh, TBAF, TBAF is nothing but tetra n butyl ammonium uh, fluoride. Uh, basically it has a, a fluoride ion and, and a counter cation as an ammonium ion. So uh, what is done it is, is this is the species that you have here and, and this is how the uh, polymeric species of the uh, PMHS uh, is having a hydrogen in the middle and then the fluoride makes a kind of um, a pentavalent uh, silicate and then what you have is uh, a possibility of transferring a hydrogen from this species to the carbonyl group. So basically this is the modified species is which is formed when the TBAF interacts with the PMHS. Uh, so uh, the reduction occurs in a slightly different way than the normal reduction that we expect from uh, normal silanes where we first make the compound under acidic conditions and then we carry out the reduction. Uh, in a similar fashion uh, we can convert an ester to the corresponding alcohol if we use um, two um, uh, equivalent of uh, PMHS and a TBAF and the anion which is going to be formed after the carbonyl group gets reduced. So if one gets 
uh, reduction and get the corresponding uh, anion which then is protonated to form the corresponding OH. So, you have uh, the to use a proton source later on during the next step. Now, there is a, another reducing agent which is called as Stryker's reagent and um, which is uh, having this copper hydride. Uh, basically, it is a hexameric copper hydride reagent ligated with triphenylphosphine. So, it is also called as Osborne complex. So, this is a reducing agent. Now, suddenly from silicon to this Osborne complex or hexameric copper hydride. Uh, I am coming to mainly because this can also be prepared using uh, silane. Uh, first let us see what is the utility or what is the use of such um, uh, copper uh, based um, complex. It is a brick red uh, air sensitive solid which is known as Stryker's reagent is mildly hydridic because you have here hydrogen there attached to copper and therefore uh, it is useful uh, because it is relatively soft because of the copper being present. It is allows the conjugate reduction of enones, enoates and related substrates different types. So, basically uh, it allows conjugate addition of the hydrogen occurring. The compound is prepared. Now, this is where the silicon based uh, things come into picture. The compound is prepared by hydrogenation of copper uh, tertiary butoxide. Uh, generated in situ from copper chloride and sodium tertiary butoxide. That means this copper tertiary butoxide is then hydrogenated and of course, a triphenylphosphine has, been, has to be put. Then we get the corresponding Osborne complex or the Stryker's reagent. The reagent can affect regioselective conjugate addition of various carbon derivatives including unsaturated aldehydes, ketones and esters which we have already seen that we can have of any kind of uh, unsaturated system where the reduction occurs at this end of the double bond. This was declared as the reagent of the year in 1991 as it could tolerate different types of functional groups tolerance, uh, high overall efficiency, mild reaction conditions in the reduction reactions. So, how it is very easy to carry out such a reduction. Therefore, uh, it is uh, it tolerates various functional groups and therefore it is of great use. Now, this is used in catalytic amount the, you can use the strikers reagent in a catalytic amount where it is regenerated in the reaction and you can use some other source of hydride in a stoichiometric way. And in that respect uh, either use molecular hydrogen or even silane. So, that is where the silane part comes in. So, this is very important that you can modify the Stryker's reagent uh, by basically using in a catalytic amount and reusing uh, along with that a silane or molecular hydrogen. So, obviously, when you have to have a choice between molecular hydrogen and silane, you might want to have silanes. Uh, over hydrogen. If it is stored under uh, inert atmosphere for example, argon nitrogen uh, it has uh, indefinite shelf life. Uh, although brief exposure to the oxygen does not destroy its activity significantly, but solvents uh, used with striker should be rigorously degassed to remove oxygen. So, uh, oxygen has to be removed. Now, how it is made is that you take this uh, um, copper uh, tertiary butoxide and use excess of triphenylphosphine and in the presence of hydrogen in the in benzene solvent it gives this hexameric Osborne complex or Stryker's reagent. When this uh, Stryker's reagent reacts with uh, an enone uh, hydrogen is transferred onto this uh, end of the uh, double bond. And as one can expect that we can have an intermediate of this type enol cuprate and this enol cuprate upon uh, this uh, reduction uh, will, will break the oxygen uh, copper bond. And of course, you regenerate the 
the catalyst here and uh, you have the enol and that enol gives the product ketone. So basically this is how the catalyst uh, is used uh, where now molecular hydrogen is used as a, in a stoichiometric way essentially to cleave the oxygen copper bond here and regenerate the uh, Osborne complex or the strikers reagent and the uh, reduced product the ketone is uh, uh, formed. Now unactivated carbon, carbon double bonds are uh, not reduced. So if you have uh, something like this here a molecule uh, of this kind uh, and you also have both the possibilities you have a simple double bond, unconjugated double bond and of course a conjugated double bond with a, with a carbon group only this will get reduced at this center. So it is a very useful reagent and uh, since it can be used only um, um, uh, catalytically you, if you one wants to use uh, in a stoichiometric way you can do that but also catalytic way. And now there have been many studies in which um, different types of silence that have been utilized for the uh, uh, reduction of uh, this particular uh, complex in such a way to form the strikers reagent. So in order to form the strikers reagent when uh, the copper chloride, potassium tetrachloride, oxide, diphenyl uh, phosphine and the silane that is used. So this silane is is used in 1.2 equivalent. So the ratio is shown here. So if you have 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1.2 that means silane is used as 1.2 then they kept on modifying and you see the effect of that on the yield. So if we have a PMHS uh, in this ratio uh, of uh, uh, different reagents then you get 47 percent and you see the best one is we have 1 is to 1 is to 2 is to 2. Uh, as ratios then you get 82 percent yield and one can also see that you can get 88 percent of this when you use this uh, dimethylphenyl silane. So there are several possibilities of this type where you can use different um, silane based uh, reducing agents where instead of using uh, molecular um, hydrogen one can use these and form the corresponding strikers region. So it is very clear that we can take a catalytic amount of this and also use uh, any one of these silanes uh, as stoichiometric reagents. And these reactions are generally performed in benzene or toluene and they allow reductions to take place in a, a conjugated fashion. Now we see uh, how these uh, silanes can act as uh, reactions uh, as, as in, in the reactions uh, where radicals are involved. In addition to their function as a hydride donor, uh, silanes uh, also may act as radical hydrogen donors. In this role they can substitute for the toxic reagent uh, tribe n butyl tin hydride. Uh, before we proceed further, uh, various kinds of uh, radical based reactions have been carried out a particular re reduction. So if one wants to carry out a reduction say for example of uh, Br here and if you want to carry out reduction to form H here what is used is, is tributyl tin hydride as a reagent as a hydrogen source in the presence of something called as AIBN, AIBN which is azo isobutyronitrile which looks like this. So you have here uh, CN then you have this particular azo group and then you have here CN. So this is how this is what is called as azo isobutyronitrile which we will discuss it later on. So these two combinations by heating allow such a reduction to take place and there are many other reactions that occur using. But in these cases the hydrogen source is basically tributyltin hydride and this is what is considered to be a toxic reagent. It is also when the reaction occurs with this tributyltin hydride 
the byproduct which is formed is tributyl tin oxide or other tin based products which are very difficult to remove from the reaction and create problems uh, in during the workup of the reaction. So in that respect uh, people have tried to use uh, tris uh, trimethylsililsilene uh, of uh, this type TTMS or tetraphenyl disilene uh, of, uh, of this type uh, tetraphenyl disilene of this type. So uh, these two reagents have been uh, used in many places where people want to carry out radical base reactions. Radical base reactions have their own uh, utility not only reductions but they allow also CC bond formations to take place when uh, radicals are invoked as intermediates. Now this uh, hydrogen transfer uh, agents in radical reactions need a low MH uh, bond dissociation energy obviously because uh, uh, we need to do these reactions not at very high temperature. So compare with the uh, tin hydrogen dissociation energy of tributyltin hydride which requires 74 kilocalories per mole, the silicon hydrogen dissociation energy of TTMS is, is approximately 79, so it is very close uh, which together with that of TBDS which is, uh, is uh, uh, significantly lower than that of triethyl silane. So if we compare the reducing ability of uh, this versus say triethylsilane, so the triethylsilane based uh, reagent requires high energy. That is the reason why this uh, TTMS, tris trimethylsilane or TPDS that is tetraphenyl disilane is used. Now what does happen? is that if you take uh, an Rx where X is a halide for example and if you use TTMS in the presence of benzoyl peroxide then you generate R dot from here and uh, uh, basically what is happening is that benzoyl peroxide uh, which is uh, benzoyl uh, peroxide or we can write it something like this you have O O CO phenyl when this is heated it eventually breaks to phenyl radical or phenyl CO O radical but eventually it forms this phenyl radical which can take the, the X from there. So you have here Rx that leads to the formation of R dot plus PHX here. So this is how one possibility can be. The other possibility is that here pH dot takes the hydrogen from the silicon of the PMHS of this TTMS and form PHH and TMS, uh, TTMS or, or TTMS dot. So and therefore this uh, the um, TTMS dot can uh, of course react with Rx to form R and then the R will react with the remaining TTMS to form Rh and TTM radical. This TTM radical will take the X from here and regenerate R dot. So essentially what is happening is that benzoyl peroxide initiates the reaction to generate a TTMS radical or TTM radical that takes the X from there generate R dot and the remaining TTMS then reacts with the R dot to get uh, uh, to uh, the product which is Rh and then regenerate the TTM radical which re-reacts with the Rx to generate R dot. This is how the reaction keeps on uh, taking place. Now there is another reaction which is called uh, barton mccombie reaction or Barton deoxygenation it is a method for the deoxygenation of alcohols. So if we have uh, an alcohol of this type uh, we can convert into a thiocarbonyl derivative uh, which is how it looks like and then that can be reacted with tributyltin hydride uh, 
uh, under conditions of similar type where we use tributyltin hydride and uh, S, uh, AIBN which I discussed as of earlier and it allows the formation of the corresponding uh, deoxygenated pro pro product. Once the radical chain has been initiated attack on the tributyl tin carrier by sulfur initiates decomposition yielding the alkyl radical for which this serves as hydrogen radical donor. We will see how the reaction takes place. This is what is azobis isobutyl nitrile where as you when you heat it, it breaks homolytically from here to form this particular uh, radical intermediate and the nitrogen goes off from the reaction. When this uh, radical reacts with the tributyltin hydride in a similar fashion uh, as we discussed earlier that the benzoyl peroxide gives a phenyl radical that reacts with the TTMS to form the corresponding radical. So similarly this tributyltin hydride reacts to form this particular tributyltin radical and of course this radical will couple with the hydrogen dot and will go away. Now this tributyltin radical then reacts with the, the, uh, the thiocarbonyl compound in this particular fashion in this way and generates an intermediate of this kind where R1 is O-methyl if R1 is O-methyl. Now this decomposes in this fashion here like this and forms this as a byproduct and then you generate a radical of this kind. This radical then reacts further with tributyltin hydride generating this uh, reduced product and you generate the same tributyltin radical which was generated here. Uh, so it is exactly similar to what we saw where TTMS and benzoyl peroxide was used instead of benzoyl peroxide here we are using AIBN which is generating a radical like this. So the driving force uh, uh, of course here you uh, take the radical form here and then you generate this tributyltin radical. The driving force for the reaction is the formation of the stable uh, sulfur tin bond. Uh, the main disadvantage of this reaction, the only problem that with this reaction is the as I earlier mentioned is the use of this tributyltin based uh, molecules which is difficult to remove and toxic, expensive uh, and so there are problems and that is the reason why some modifications have been carried out. An alternative is to replace tin reagents with uh, silane based reagents. A few examples of reactions are shown here uh, which exhibit similar reactivity as tributyltin hydride in a variety of radical reactions. An example of the barton mccombe re deoxygenation reaction using tetraphenyl disilane that is TPDS whose structure is here as shown. Now TPDS is a, a better uh, reagent than tributyltin hydride not only in terms of toxicity but also it gives better yield. So if we take an example of this kind which is sugar derived xanthate then with TPDS AIBN combination in refluxing ethyl acetate the deoxygenation leads to the formation of this particular product. Now not only xanthates can be uh, reduced to the corresponding uh, deoxygenated product but it is also possible to generate a radical uh, if we have a, a halide carbon halide bond can be cleaved to the corresponding radical as it is shown here. So if we start with a, a brominated molecule like this and react with TPDS AIBN combination in refluxing ethyl acetate what we first generate is of course this radical. If uh, uh, this uh, double bond was not present then of course this radical would have taken hydrogen and then we could have got the correspondingly reduced product. However since there is a properly oriented double bond 
which is present uh, in the molecule. Therefore, this radical undergoes intramolecular cyclization to form uh, this type of uh, bicyclic molecule. So, it is also possible not only that we can reduce the uh, carbon halide bond, but also we can allow the radical to undergo uh, intramolecular cyclization. So, these kind of CC bond formations are also possible and thus tetraphenyl disilane or similar types of silane reagents uh, make a better alternative than the tributyltin hydride. We can also uh, use uh, this type of uh, substrates where we have this uh, uh, particular uh, reagent, this is TTMS and AIBN and of course here base this is like a uh, different types of uh, uh, nucleic bases and uh, we can then have uh, two radicals that are going to form one here and one here they couple or they form the corresponding double bond. So, radical base transformation of vicinal diols to olefins this is this can come from the corresponding diol via thiooxo carbamate derivative and that leads to the formation of this. So, you can start with the corresponding sugar based molecule and carry out the reaction which has been published in 2003. Now, another alternative is the use of uh, a catalytic amount of uh, tributyl tin oxide uh, approximately 7.5 percent as the radical source and polymethyl hydrosiloxane PMHS as the hydrogen source. Now, what is done is that the substrate which is a hydroxy compound can be converted to the corresponding thionocarbonate derivative like this by reacting with uh, phenyl uh, chlorothiono formate like this in the presence of pyridine and uh, we can react then this particular thionocarbonate derivative uh, with uh, tributyltin oxide in the presence of PMHS and of course AIBN, but the solvent N-butanol is a very important solvent and a mixture of N-butanol and toluene is used and it is reflux in that particular medium to form this deoxygenated product. Now what happens is uh, uh, you get a uh, side product as this carbonyl sulfide which is a gas which goes away and of course we get this uh, phenoxy tributyl thin uh, derivative. So uh, this tributyl thin oxide actually reacts with PMHS at 80 degrees in uh, N-butanol to release the tributyl thin hydride and that is what is uh, basically uh, reacting here in this particular stage in the presence of AIBN to generate tributylkin radical which of course interacts with this thionocarbonate and leads to the deoxygenation. Now this uh, byproduct which is uh, phenoxy tributylkin derivative then reacts with uh, PMHS uh, again uh, at 80 degrees in N-butanol and releases tributyltin hydride and of course uh, there will be a silane derivative here. So this is how the reaction uh, is uh, perceived and uh, it gives an alternative to uh, the use of uh, uh, stoichiometric amount of uh, tin uh, hydride based uh, compound. So we will stop it at this stage and uh, in the next class we will take the uh, radical uh, based reactions uh, because they are very close to these and therefore how the radical based reactions can uh, permit uh, not only reduction but also CC bond formation uh, in many, many cases. Uh, we will uh, take up that next time till then uh, you can uh, go over whatever I have discussed uh, in today's class. Uh, thank you and see you next time.